You can ask many men over the age of 30 what their favorite movie is, and I'm willing to bet a large percentage of them will at least tell you Gladiator ranks highly. It certainly does for me. The first movie is really special in so many ways. I think it was the first R-rated movie I ever saw as my family rented it from Blockbuster and didn't realize it was rated R. But also the score is really memorable from Hans Zimmer and I used it in one of my personal films growing up that I made in the backyard with my friends. And so there's a lot of touching elements to it, to me that make it special. So I was really nervous going in. I just wanna set that stage and that precedent. So when a sequel was announced for 24 years later, I somewhat dismissed it as a cash grab that can never live up to not only the first film, but a genre that has all but disappeared. I love sword and sandal epics. I'm glad to say that I was mostly wrong. Gladiator 2 is a riveting return to form that boldly proved to me that yes, it has a profound reason to exist. While the original is as iconic as they come, this one never quite reaches those same heights, but I'm not sure I expected it to. It may not be as good as the original, but simply being great was more than enough. It had to convince everyone that it had a story worth telling, and I'm shocked that it did. It leans heavily into a sense of legacy I didn't expect, but it's never really a tearjerker. However, it did stir a sense of honor in me. One thing I do want to mention is the action. The original is shot pretty classically around stunt doubles and close-ups, but edited well. Here, the choreography is a step up, as is the fight scene staging overall. The camera is often left wide to showcase what it appears that the actors learned themselves. To add to the brutal realism and sell the urgency in the combat, we get to see all of the action and actual long takes well choreographed. I feel that this really shines in the one-on-one -on -one fights and the large scale ones have a fantastic sense of weight and momentum, particularly in their sound design that keeps the film ever engaging. There is a particular set piece that will challenge your preconceptions about what was possible during the Roman Colosseum area and history. And I'm still questioning it, but it was awesome. The cast is mostly excellent. I bought Paul Mescal as who he is and how he channeled the rage, ferocity, trauma, and honor that his character should carry. I do feel Derek Jacoby was pretty wasted, but Connie Nielsen has given some good scenes. Pedro Pascal is as reliable as ever with a very memorable role I wish had been expanded though. It's good to see Joseph Quinn get more roles, but he and the other Emperor are played insanely over the top. While it may fit with how some in Roman culture are often portrayed, these characters can be a distraction and often clash with the rest of the movie. We're told a lot about their tyranny, but we don't don't ever really see it much. They tell us, they don't show us. And Denzel Washington is a bit of an enigma. He's one of the finest actors of a generation and at times here, it really shows. And then at others, he feels as if he walked in from another movie, completely aware that he's Denzel being Denzel in Toga. His role goes from zero to 100 really fast. And that all ties into my biggest gripe. It's got a lot of great individual elements, but these various subplots are really rushed. And frankly, lead to some big head scratching moments that rob from the emotional core. Never enough to disappoint in my opinion, but enough to notice. I strongly feel time could have been better spent in several areas to better flesh out the world, since so much time has passed since the first movie. But they spend several minutes on a recap of that first movie and lean a lot on a text dump at the beginning as the first movie did to set the stage. And maybe Ridley Scott has a director's cut planned. I hope he does, as this should have been three hours. It is insanely well made, shot, and I personally enjoy the look of the cinematography, but it does come across as, we have to keep this under two and a half hours to stay on budget at times. Perhaps one of the biggest disappointments is the score was kind of forgettable outside of the tracks from the original. Yet still, I miss movies like this and I welcome this one with open arms, especially ones like this so well crafted and gorgeous. It is a bit more flawed than I expected, particularly in the writing or how they chose to structure the story with the editing and what I presume they chose to cut. However, I would argue that the artistic merits in the filmmaking and earnestness in the story granted a lot of favor for me. It may be compared to a political climate nowadays, it may not, but the call to action being to unify for the sake of the betterment of a nation and people feels timeless. Roman culture ends in tragedy, everyone knows this, but seeing examples of masculinity shown in various forms where courage, honor, respect, and loving one's wife and family is celebrated, forgiveness over revenge, defending one's home, accepting your family's legacy, are all worthwhile themes that resonate so deeply with me in this genre. In the grand scheme of things, despite some setbacks, Gladiator 2 still excels and I am quite entertained. Bring on a director's cut, Mr. Scott. I give Gladiator 2 four out of five stars. Thanks so much for tuning in. Remember, always look for the good.